What's the best vlog lens for your Sony camera? Today we're gonna find out! Is it the Sony 20mm 1.8? Is it the Sony 24mm 1.4? Or maybe the ultra-wide Sony 40mm 1.8? Or is it the more affordable Tamron 17-28 to 2.8 lens? Don't worry, it's your camera boy Jonah and today I'm gonna help you decide which lens is for you and I do that while showing you a bit of beautiful Dubai. So that's gonna be two in one, you'll know what lenses you will want and you will see some awesome video here of Dubai. Something that you might do a lot in your vlogs is show people where you are and you might do that POV style. This is the 14 mm 1.8. It's insane, insane to show things from the POV perspective and with the 1.8, look how creamy this is. If you take it away, boom, you can really, really show people where you are. Now we are shooting on the Tamron 17 to 28 millimeter. Obviously the Tamron 17 is gonna be a little less wide. 2.8 will also give a little bit less cream in the background. And this is a Sony 20 millimeter 1.8. You can still really give this POV effect, but it comes like a little bit more tight. Obviously very creamy though, because it's 20 millimeter and 1.8. So very nice to show the people where you are. Now we are shooting with the Sony 24 millimeter 1.4. This lens is the tightest one that we have. Bokeh is gonna be like super, super creamy of course, 24 and 1.4, but you see less of the environment. It's not the best anymore for vlogging if you wanna do a lot of these types of shots. One of the reasons I personally bought this 40 mm 1.8 is because it's so stable when you walk. So let's now do with all the lenses a walking and a running test. So this is the 14 mm 1.8. I'm not trying to uh, be super stable. I'm just very natural. And let's now run a little bit. Because you know, vlogging, I think it's quite important that the footage is not too shaky. And the wider the lenses, the less shaky we'll have. And from the first things that I saw, from this lens it's almost when you really really try it almost looks like a gimbal which is for sure a bonus for this lens now let's do the walking and running test for the Tamron 17 28 so obviously we're at 17 let's start running I'm th I think this one will be the last one that still be will be okay with like the running part walking should be fine with a 17 millimeter very curious myself see if there's any difference with the 16 millimeter. Now it's time to test out the Sony 20 millimeter 1.8 walking test. Here we go, just nice chill walking. Hello Felix. And let's start to run. It's a good workout guys. Good uh, running session on the beach here showing this to you. Now the last lens of the test, the Sony 24 millimeter 1.4 G Master. I loved, I loved, I loved this lens because it looks so cinematic to vlog. But when I got it, I realized that, uh, yeah, honestly, I have a little bit of a shaky hand. And I realized that when I was walking, the footage was just too shaky for my liking. Now, maybe if you have a more stable hand or if you take all your shots more standing still, it might be okay. Let's now run with this lens and see how it still hold, holds up and running. Oh my God, I think this is gonna be a big fail. I already see it on the little screen there. You know what? I'll stand still for a second because that's where I think this lens shines. You cannot have a more cinematic vlogging lens than this lens. But the problem is that it's just so shaky when you walk that I don't think it's a good overall versatile vlogging lens. If you want to support the channel or you're curious about the current price of all of these lenses, the links are down below. You know where to find them. We all have bokeh, so let's do a quick bokeh test right now with the 40 millimeter. That's an f 1.8 lens. What do you think of the bokeh, guys? And this is a Tamron 17 2.8, so obviously that's gonna produce the least amount of creamy background blur. But hey, actually, I think it's still very nice. And as I said, this is the most affordable lens of them all. And for this price, have this focal range and this still 2.8 aperture. I think it's a deal, to be honest. This lens is a 20 millimeter 1.8, so obviously a bit of a tighter focal length, so that's gonna produce more bokeh, but also 1.8. What do you think? Which one do you like more? This lens should give us the most insane background blur, because it's 24 millimeter and it's 1.4. You almost don't even know where I am anymore, but it does look, I mean, the bokeh does look nice, right? We just transported to beautiful Tulum, and right now I'm shooting with the Sony 24 millimeter 1.4 lens. Downside, obviously, walking it's a little bit shaky as i already mentioned also it's a little tight right like i'm in a very beautiful place but uh it's sort of hard to show off where i am plus side for this lens super super cinematic i mean look at this look at the sun there in the background look how i pop and how you have that nice compression of my face you know like not too much distortion etc size and weight are for sure a bonus for this lens price it's kind of like 
in between let's call it in between this is also my favorite lens to pop on a gimbal so if you like doing that if you like to include some cinematics in your vlogs then this one is for sure a beast for that obviously this lens is a low light monster 1.4 and a Sony camera nothing can go wrong there to get some crispy low light footage when I first bought this lens I thought it would be the ultimate cinematic vlogging beast after using it for a while I decided that it's not really for me it's a little bit too shaky a little bit too tight but if I would have to choose my favorite cinematic video lens then this is for sure my go-to lens lens that you're currently seeing is the Sony 14 mm 1.8 now, the big downside of these lenses, you can't use variable on the ND filters or any ND filter whatsoever on it. That means that right now to shoot at f1.8, my shutter speed has to be oh. 1 over 640. And that's gonna make that it's gonna be like a little bit more jittery. You know, you won't have that nice motion blur. Now, obviously, the number, number, number one benefit to this lens is look how wide it is. I'm in a beautiful place. I'm vlogging. I want to show off where I am. And well, what better way to do that than with a 14 millimeter lens. You can literally see everything around me. I would say that the size and weight are also bonuses to this lens. Price, again, a little bit of an, uh, not so sure. It's a bit of in the middle. Plus side to this lens is that it's pretty stable to walk because it's so wide. Also, for example, right now I'm on a beach. Sometimes the audio is not the best there, but the closer you can be to the mic, the better the audio is for your video. And because this lens is so wide, it can be like, like literally, this is actually me almost touching the lens. So that's gonna make that the audio is very, very good with this as a vlogging setup. I would also say that it looks pretty cinematic. You know, you have the 1.8, which is crazy for a wide angle lens. Also low light, obviously not a problem because of the 1.8. So the only downside that I would maybe see with this lens is that it distorts a little bit, you know, if you're closer or to the edges. Oh, this is not flattering. All right, we're going back to the middle. So as you saw, not the most flattering lens. Sometimes you need to know how to use it and another thing is that it's maybe not a super versatile lens because yeah you just have this very wide angle it's a very specific look if you like that if that's what you're going for this lens is the one if you kind of want to have some more options maybe like a zoom type of lens is more a thing for you it's a bit of a gloomy sunset but uh pretty pretty epic i guess for this review here check out the colors in the sky man so right now i'm shooting with the tamron 17 to 28 millimeter downside well obviously 2.8 but there's many 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 plus sizes plus sizes i'm sorry plus sides to this lens which obviously price is the number one also the size weight very very nice and then well i mean for sure this is the only zoom lens so ooh -wee, 28 millimeter it's uh maybe a little close i don't think you guys want to see my face from so uptight at least you have the option if you want to shoot some b-roll of other people of the location whatever it is you have a lot of options to shoot with this lens colors and sharpness are sometimes a little less good with this lens compared to the sony g master lenses but yeah i mean the price is also almost double for these lenses so this one is actually the one i would recommend for most of you guys 90 percent of you guys the most versatile lens the best bang for your budget shooting now with the sony 20 millimeter 1.8 this is not a g master lens but honestly the quality the same the same one of my favorites because although this is not a zoom lens you have 20 millimeter but if you turn the camera into APS-C mode you have a sort of 35 millimeter look which could be very cool to shoot b-roll a little bit too tight for uh, vlogging yourself but for b-roll of other people pretty cool since it's not a G master lens this makes it also a little bit more budget friendly weight and size are super super good of this lens probably the best out of all the ones that I showed you 1.8 is gonna make it look really cinematic and also 20 millimeter which is not like really wide still gives kind of a flattering look to your face so more of a yeah a cinematic look let's say to your vlog downside to that I still find it a little shaky for me handheld but not gonna lie I think if you have a more stable hand this might actually really work out for you it's getting a bit darker here but obviously low light is also not gonna be a problem with this lens since you have the beautiful 1.8 oh look at those little lights that turned on there in the background nice and blurry bokeh and here's a little low light and bokeh test for you guys as you can see woo, pretty creamy in the background and i'm not even actually extending now my arm because oh my god this lens is so wide yeah i love this lens man ultra wide you are able to show everything pretty stable when you walk and it still has a 1.8 aperture creamy background and you as a subject being really like pop 3d i would say 10 out of 10 for this lens. The lens that is going to perform the worst in this situation is the Tamron, of course, because that one has 2.8. 2.8 is a good aperture for low light scenarios. It's more when you're really stuck at like 4.5 or something that you're uh, in trouble sometimes. Now with these modern day cameras, with Sony's, like where you're gonna shoot it on, 
you know what I mean right now I'm at ISO 2000 okay I have some lights here of the environment so it's maybe not like super low light so that's why you might not really be in trouble with 2.8 instead of 1.4 at the moment because these cameras can just handle it man that's why you have a Sony that's why you're looking for a Sony vlogging lens because you don't have to worry about 1.4 or 2.8 and you could actually go for this more affordable option by the way this is actually the lens of my buddy Felix here Felix you own this lens so what is for you the best thing about this lens uh, it's crazy light it's like the lightest lens I got love it a lot currently shooting on a 20 millimeter 1.8 lens well, I mean, obviously this is gonna be so, so good for low light performance since it's 1.8. It still gives you a fairly wide view, which is great for vlogging. This is now the Sony 24 mm 1.4. Obviously this lens is the one that's gonna produce the best bokeh and the best low light performance. You know, like it's a bit of a trade-off with all the things mentioned before in the video, why this lens is maybe not the best vlog lens for you. But if low light, is the only thing that you care about maybe a nice creamy background and bokeh then this lens is the one to get for sure 